Okay. Uh, what am I making now? Only you know. All right. Uh, as you know, I teach a class and I have a book. And I would say, not boastingly, but I would say that out of ignorance, seven years ago when I got it, I sat right where that pretty blonde lady is sitting in the back there. That's how I got into this business. I sat right back there and I took the same class you are. And then when my machine was delivered, after I decided that I could make far better ice cream than the instructor, I went home and I got the machine uh, and it was, I had them put it in my kitchen with a 220 line right in my kitchen. I put tarp on the floor and now I have to make ice cream because I've committed. And uh, I didn't really know what to do. So I went to the supermarket, Publix in Florida, uh, and I took my cart and I walked up and down every aisle. And whatever I saw that I thought could make ice cream, I bought. I bought uh, cookies, I bought candies, I bought jars of coconut, I bought Jello because they have a hundred flavors that they've done all the work for you. And I bought all the products I could, brownies, uh, whatever I thought would make good ice cream. And then I came home and I started experimenting with uh, the mix and, and these flavors. Uh, and that's how I still make ice cream. I don't have any of these things in my store. I don't have any of those things in my store. And I don't have any of those things in my store. Uh, and, and the people who've been to the class that are here can attest to that. I have uh, just food on my shelves. I have raisins and, and chocolate and Oreo cookies and Reese's peanut butter cups and uh, Hershey's, uh, just everything that, that we like in ice cream, uh, but not uh, jars and cans of stuff. Just the way I do it. So, uh, one of the things that I found was uh, when I was looking at the Jello, I look at the Jello, they have a hundred flavors there, and they give you ideas for combinations. And one of the things I found was uh, the Jello no bake cheesecake. And uh, so I thought, cheesecake ice cream, you know, not bad. So we'll take, they give you two packets in here. One is the cheesecake stuff, the other is the graham cracker stuff. So what we'll do, just so you can see it, I'll do it up here. We'll take the, the half batch of, uh, that we're going to use a half batch as opposed to my full batch. And we'll take, this is the, this is the cheesecake part of the mix. And then this should be the graham cracker part of the mix. I'm not doing this for flourish. I'm just trying to let you see it because we don't have overhead cameras. Next year we'll have overhead cameras. Uh, we're going to make turtle cheesecake. Turtle cheesecake, uh, chocolate, caramel, and what? <laughs> Nuts. Yesterday we were talking about this in class and I didn't realize we needed nuts. But I was told we need pecans, right? Oh, sorry, pecans. So, so I have some pecans, which will have to do. I just don't have pecans. Uh, so should we add them now or throw them in the machine? In the machine. We'll hold off them and throw them in the machine. Uh, we have that and we have this. So we're really all set to make our turtle cheesecake. All we have to do is mix this up. Let's see. Uh, we'll throw in a little vanilla. It's always, always a little vanilla. And, da, 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 okay. And this we'll want to mix up a little bit because it'll just make a smoother product. Uh, 
Huh? 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 I'll tell you, I have to work under some conditions here. Tell them it ran much smoother at the store. Okay, so I've sort of rinsed this out. When we sit down for the question and answer, somebody asked a question about the order of making ice cream. Okay, I'll give you a really good tip about it. So here's a half a batch of this going in. Door closed. When I say I, I make a full batch, which is one full bladder, 10 quarts, it gives me seven or eight gallons of finished product that come out. So I'm figuring a half will give us four, three and a half, three, four around there. So you use a lot of products that are from the grocery store. Are you required to buy your milk bladders or your ice cream mixture bladders? Wait a second. Let's get to the question here. We only have a few hours. <laughs> well, I was trying to make sure that I that I uh, ask. Are you? You can't buy. That, uh, you can't buy the mix in a market or a store. The the bladders that we use have to come from a dairy. Right. So you can't go home and like cook your milk and eggs and all and make your own cream and all that. Sure, you can. Sure you can. Did you notice before that Steve made his product using a container of half and half? Yes. So you can't do that. So your health department doesn't have a problem with that. I don't know. <laughs> there is a pasteurization yeah. issue. Uh, when you buy it from a dairy, it's pasteurized. No bacteria. When you do it at home, uh, so don't even bother. Just go buy it. What's the problem? Don't make it at home. Just go buy it. You know, what we want to do is we want to concentrate our efforts where we're going to do two things. We're going to make a lot of money and have a lot of fun. Right. So a pasteurizer is going to cost you $15,000. That's if you want to make your own stuff. Uh, and then you've got the associated problems with it. You know, coming up to code, being inspected, being tested, uh, the consistency. You buy it from a dairy, they deliver every Tuesday morning, you throw it in the freezer, you take it out the night before, and you're ready to roll. The simpler the better. Okay? Uh, let's go with this, and let's start it. Now, this is going to be turtle cheesecake. So we have three other ingredients. We have the nuts, the pecans. We have the caramel. And we have the chocolate. That's what turtles are, right? Well, actually, turtles are little. You know. the, what I decided to try today is sea salt caramel. Sea salt being all the rage. <laughs> and I use... Uh, uh, Hershey's Special Dark. It's a, it's a, just a great, great product. Um, and it says on the front, Special Dark. It's nowhere near what regular Hershey's is. A little bit difficult to find, but it's there. Write that down, Special Dark. Now, by the way, in the class, you get a workbook. A shameless promotion, right? Uh, you get a workbook and uh, and a recipe book and what all those cards you get hundreds of recipes you get an apron you get uh, lunch breakfast but it's just a oh you didn't eat it it was there sausages eggs uh, home fries I don't know how you missed it it was all there Right now it's on super premium ice cream, which is 165 miles an hour. Uh, top speed on this baby is 234 miles per hour. 
234. I go for it. Because he has this box on here. Oh, yeah. Homemade ice cream, I think, is 234. Should we go up there? Really? Flies in the face of what he says. Ho, oh, ho! Oh. <laughs> this thing goes flying out. Jim gets hit right in the face with it. Uh, now, what we have to do is make a variegate. Stripes, right? Because we want our product to look good as well as taste good. So, there's a method to doing that too, which coincidentally I invented. I'll tell you, if you're thinking of getting into this business, just do it. It's fun, it's, it's easy, it's long, but the profit is, as we discovered, ridiculous. It's ridiculous profit. What were you going to ask me? I said, don't forget to remind me to ask me ask a question about. Order. What? Order, order. Good girl. Good girl. They're from Grant, Florida. Smart people in Grant, Florida. Uh, the order of things. Because Steve and I differ on that. And of course, I think I know best. So, well, you have to think that way, right? Now, I'm going to do something that he hasn't done yet. Every batch, whether I use a recipe that I make every single day, I want to taste it. Because things change. Things, the humidity changes things. The order, stray stuff, like I, I had coffee ice cream in here before. I rinsed it, but things change. So I always want to taste. Before I put the refrigeration on. What? I can't hear her from up here. Never. Never. However, what I have done is I've given my friend uh, uh, vanilla caramel praline spatula ice cream. <laughs> and, and it was a good friend. It was a good friend. Well, it was a good thing he got it. Uh, this is perfect. So we're going to go, we're going to roll with it, all right? Now, uh, what we'll do, ah, where's my squishy container? Oh, right here. <laughs> Hello. Uh, the way to make variegate, I used to do it a different way. Now I do it this way. And maybe next year I'll do it another way, but this way is really good. I'm sticking with this for a while now. It's a, it's a good method. Uh, I'm going to add the nuts now, the pecans. I'll add one pecans, one pecans for the rich people. And truly, these machines are, you, you can add pebbles if you want that. Uh, the machines are ridiculous. They're, I have a friend who runs a, a fairly successful shop, and he uses a, a, another brand of machine. And the, this whole part is plastic, and this part is steel. So the trouble spot is right there where the rubber meets the road, where the plastic meets the steel, because there's some stress here, and his has broken right there. The plastic is cracked. $2,200 because you need a full new door and the door is still plastic so it may happen again but uh, this is this is so worth it yeah. okay uh, get some more bowls so this is turtle cheesecake ice cream <laughs> turtle cheesecake ice cream with sea salt caramel Hershey's Special Dark, and a whole bunch of pecans. And it's looking good. Get those pecans down in there.
Any questions? <laughs> you gotta fill my time. Hey, how there's a question way in the back. Yes, sir. <laughs> Correct. When we sit down, I think after this, do we sit down after this? Uh, yes, after this is questions and answers. So you ought to think of them because we, we're really out of it. We, you know, we'll just sit there. So ask questions. Okay, that's a good question. Any other good questions? <laughs> well, I'm going to save that for the question time, right? I'm okay. <laughs> no, uh, should I tell? Should I tell him? No, should I, yeah, okay. Uh, I went to Ben and Jerry's factory in Vermont. And I paid $35 for a Ben and Jerry's ice cream, ice cream apron. Then I came home and had my guy sew a patch on it <laughs> with the name of my store. The truth shall set you free. Now, how do I know when it's ready? Somebody asked, right? I like it sooner than he does. I like it when it holds a peak in the, in the bucket. You know, when it drips down and doesn't just do that. When it holds a peak, it's ready, in my world. Uh, there's other reasons I like it looser than firmer. Uh, they're a little more technical. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> we're close. When we're close, my attention goes here, so talk amongst yourselves. almost holding a peak. Now, interestingly enough, to make a variegate, it has to be a little firmer than looser. Hold the stripes. So I'm going to let it go 20 seconds later than I normally do. Question, can you overdo it? Yeah. Can you underdo it? Yeah. yeah. Yes, you could because you can just look, he made his ices a little firmer. That would be perfect for a variegate, for stripes. Waste not, want not. We have some great questions coming up for the answer, question and answer part. Okay. I've been stalling them. We're going to do that as soon as you uh, yes. serve this to everyone. Now, I told them that this is going to go a little more firm than I normally do so that it will hold the stripes. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack, could you bring my mic up? All set, Steve. Thank you. How about mine, Jack? All set. Turtle cheesecake. Yum. Can you have that? Sure, I can. I just cr crank up the uh, pump. When you turn off the refrigeration, it's still cool in there. And, and the, the sides of the wall are still cold, just like your car or just like any, any air conditioner, right? Yes. So, uh, which is another reason why, and it's still whipping. So it's another reason why you can get, my machine technically, theoretically, should give me six gallons of ice cream. It's a 24 quart machine. 
But as you saw yesterday, we got eight out of some. We got seven out of most. Because after the first one, there's more air in there, so it's whipping it constantly. Like right now, it's continually whipping it. Even after I draw off some of it, it's still whipping it. See those pecans? Yeah, what about the bench? On the bench. It's just getting worse for you. It's like Steve's story of how we grew up drinking stuff out of a garden hose and it was good for you. That's right. <laughs> okay, the all important variegate. Try to let you see this. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do, we have, we have the ice cream, and then we're going to take whatever we want to do with it, in this case some chocolate, and some caramel, all on top, and we'll give it two or three folds. One, two, three folds. And then if your bucket is soft enough, when you squeeze it and it comes out, you'll see that you're going to get beautiful stripes in your ice cream. <laughs> Pretty good. Beautiful. That's a beautiful thing. And then, of course, when you put it in your freezer, uh, when you put it in your freezer and it gets hard and you scoop it, each ball will have like those, you know, it'll be beautiful. Just like when he scoops his three flavors, he'll run across them and you'll get it like that. Uh, Want to try this? Okay. Okie dokie. I'm going to be first. Uh, where's our scooper? Um, just a little bit, please. Thank you. That's good. Thanks. Uh, okay. Oh, it's delicious. It's turtle cheesecake. Really, really good. Hey, kid. <laughs> Everyone will get served. <laughs> That's great, Jeff. Well, thank Jello. Mm. <laughs> Sammy will be in next. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, everybody wants to see how the puppy's growing. Wow. Is that currently on your menu at the uh, store? No, I'll ma I decided that I'll make it this week. Mm. I'm schedule when do we hit the gym? What? I'm when do we hit the gym? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is good. Really good. There's no gym today. No gym today? Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Was that Connie saying bring oh, some in for the office staff? <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, Jim.
Jack, do these line up for the camera okay? The chairs? Looks good, Steve. Okay. It's good? Really? Well, I'll try it, actually. It is awesome. Isn't that good? It is good. It is good. Yeah. So if you'll take the far seat, I'll be right with you. You want to give this to them? Yeah. We'll package it up. After you leave, we sell this out on the street. I know, I know. <laughs> $10 a pint. You want me to take the far seat? Yes, please. Okay. Be right in. Um, I don't know what he's doing. I'm doing uh, something different next time. Uh, after I don't know. So did you see how easy this stuff is? Really, even making the stripes is easy. Uh, it's simple business. Do you like the pecans in there or not? Yes. Yeah? Okay. This is Sammy. Sammy has taken over for Sadie, who was here for 13 years and seven months. And Sammy is uh, 11 months old, so she's still a puppy. No, no, she can't have any. So we're going to answer some questions for you, and Sammy just wants to listen in for a minute. Okay, one of the questions was about... In your daily making of ice cream, the order of making product. <laughs> Steve and I differ on this, and I think I'm right. Uh, we, we saw this yesterday. When Steve's uh, philosophy on this is you work from light to dark. So in other words, all your white ice creams then are followed by your pink and, and red and yellow ice creams followed by your brown ice creams. And you can put the flavors to these, right? Yes. Well, I differ from that. I think that you should, I work at the store by ingredients. I want my uh, fewer ingredients earlier, especially ingredients like raisins, uh, cherries, pineapple, uh, not so much coconut, chocolate chips, those will come sooner. Peanut butter cups later. Uh, M&Ms earlier. Because I, I want to make, I make about 50 to 70 gallons at a time. It takes me maybe three and a half hours. Maybe four hours. And I want to, you know, I'm moving because I'm doing this three, four times a week. So, and I have a life outside of this. Not a big one, but some life. So I want to make my, my day as efficient as possible. And the thing that you have to do between flavors is either rinse or break down and really clean. And I want to keep those two to a minimum. And as I told the people yesterday in the class, this is a homemade neighborhood ice cream store. Even though we get that kind of volume, it's still perceived as not... Uh, a Ben and Jerry store or a Hagen dazs store or a Baskin Robbins store. This is homemade, made by me. I'm being upstaged, aren't I? And she's leaving. So when I, when when somebody gets a, a coconut rum ice cream and it has a few chocolate chips in it, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with my chocolate cherry having a few strands of coconut in it. I'm okay with it. What I wouldn't want is I wouldn't want my smooth chocolate velvet to have raisins in it or cherries in it. That's, that's where I try to draw the line. So I, I draw the day out. I get all my flavors on cards, and I line them up as far as ingredients. I don't mind following a chocolate velvet with a vanilla Heath Bar Crunch. It doesn't bother me at all. Because chocolate velvet is smooth, no chips, no fudge, no nuts, and then start adding the other one. So the color doesn't really affect me. 
<laughs> Sounds okay. I mean, I've got strawberry in there, and I'm going to go right to blueberry. Well, that's sure. Because that's they're true. both uh, fruit flavors. Right. And there's so little left of strawberry in there that it'll cover over, the blueberry will cover over it. And they're both similar products. Right. So no I'm problem. going into, we're going to make peanut butter and jelly ice cream next, and I'm going to go right after the turtle cheesecake. And the peanut butter and jelly, he's then going to duck out in his Corvette and, and leave because it messes up uh, everything it touches so it's much. It's the worst. It's the worst. So uh, Peanut butter is absolutely the worst thing in your machine. We have a hazmat crew coming in to clean the machine <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> you ever have, I mean, do you think about people with peanut allergies and they ask, you know, if you're mixing product in a machine, you might do peanut butter ice cream. And then you know butter, that. And there might be a little bit in there. Technically, if you've ever used your machine for making peanut butter ice cream, you can never, ever, for the life of the machine, not tell people that there hasn't been nuts in there. So basically, if they ask, if, if, do you have any peanuts in here, just say yes. It's like the military. Yes. Don't see, don't yes. tell. <laughs> um, I don't know. What was most, pe most people will put up a sign in their store saying that our machinery has also been used to process peanuts. Uh, so you, you do have to cover yourself legally, and uh, there, there's no way around it. Um, but it, it, the machine, you know, when you sanitize it, it's, it's killing off everything, of except, the law, except the lawyers. <laughs> of course And that's is. the problem. And that's, that's <laughs> where Steve and I, we go way back. We're not kids anymore. <laughs> And we're dictated pretty much by logic and reality. And he just said the reality. When we put chlorine in our machine, it's killing everything. But to the nut people, no pun intended. No, that was good. <laughs> it, it still has peanut oil on, in the machine. It really doesn't, but technically it does. So that's why major companies came up with the, the legal jargon that says that uh, this machinery at this plant was also used to process peanut equipment. And I think people with true peanut allergies, which it does exist, definitely uh, realize that uh, a big corporation like General Mills or General Foods, uh, they can't have separate plants just for doing peanut, uh, but they know also that the chlorine kills off everything. And to put a sign like that in a neighborhood store, you're going to affect more than people with the nut allergies. It's going to be a, a negative up there. I don't want negative signs in my store. So how about some other questions? Store Who else? Yes, yes sir. Temperature, would you store the product after it comes out of there? Is, is there a, uh, a temperature you like? Um, the ice cream or the, or the ices? Let's go with hard, hard ice cream. Hard ice cream. As cold as you can get it is, is the, the real answer um, because the colder it gets, the longer you can keep it. But then you have to look at what the reality is of your store. Jeff is making ice cream that he's going to sell uh, in the next 24 hours, so he doesn't have to keep it very cold because it's not going to be around very long. If you're going to make, if you're a wholesaler and you're making product, you know, in June that you're going to deliver the first of July, you want to keep it as as cold as you can. Uh, generally, in ice cream parlors uh, or in the ice cream business, uh, we like to see 25 to 30 below zero. If you're planning on storing this product, um, warmer temperature if you're not. And, and that cold, I said, is a great preservative. In fact, if you look at a container of uh, Talenti, uh, which is an ice cream I like, a gelato I like, or haagen who we put in business, or Ben & Jerry, it's very interesting. It lists the ingredients, and there are no stabilizers in there. There's no, uh, no nothing, not even natural ones like gar or carrageenan. And I was at Penn State University uh, teaching there, and I asked about that. I said, how do they get away with it? Where the ice cream parlors that I deal with can't do it. And he said, the difference is we're freezing the ice cream down to very cold, 40, 50 below zero after it's made. Um, and that's not to preserve it, it's to ship it. The colder we get it, the, the further we can ship it, easier. But when you buy haagen think about it. You bring it home, and you have a little taste as soon as you bring it home. And then you have some at dinner. And then if you're like me at 11 o'clock at night, you go back and have another little taste. That pint is not going to hang around for more than two or three days. I mean, nobody honestly really has pints of Haagen-Dazs sitting in their freezer. 
And so you go it through it so quickly that there is no need to stabilize it. If you were running not Jeff's business, but a uh, more typical ice cream parlor where the ice cream is on display for seven to 10 days, uh, you need ways to stabilize it. The faster you move through the product, the less uh, adulteration you need of it. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I've been in this business a long time. That was a surprise to me, that uh, the, the difference between um, so many ice creams and, and uh, ones that have no stabilizers or emulsifiers or anything, it's just a matter of how long is it going to hang around. The shorter the time, the faster you can move it. Now, if you wanted to make an example, if you had a hot pastrami sandwich, uh, it's, it's great for the next couple of hours, but you wouldn't leave it out in the Florida sun for 10 hours because, you know, it's going to go bad. If, if you keep this product and you move it fast, you can do lesser temperatures. The colder the temperature, the longer you can keep it. In my store, the, I, have, uh, I don't have a walk-in freezer. I, 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 my philosophy varies on that. I have 13 freezers, in the, each independent freezer. And all of them keep the temperature. After we make the product, it's put in the back, and some of the freezers are minus 9, some are minus 5, some are minus 2, some are 0, some are minus 6. I don't really care. They're all going to freeze the product. Uh, some will, and some parts of the freezer, Steve taught me this, the bottom corners are much colder than the top middle in a freezer. So, you know, the, the girls really don't get into that, and I don't really care. As long as it's put in the freezer quickly and it freezes, and then the next day when it's ready, uh, there are some flavors that have to be tempered on the counter because they're too hard. Uh, M&M, chocolate velvet, uh, uh, the, the chocolates tend to get harder but they have to let them sit out for 15 minutes. And then during the night, luckily we're very busy and the freezer opens and closes, opens and closes, and that brings the temperature up also. So by, at, at six o'clock, it's hard to scoop them when we open at six o'clock, it's hard to scoop them. By 7.30, they're perfectly scoopable. By 9.30, they're soft because of the opening and closing of the freezers. We work from two freezers up front. I know a couple of things I want to show you about Italian ice. Um, <clears throat> I'm making it using fresh frozen fruit. Uh, that's not always going to be uh, practical. And um, what's not practical about it is um, bubble gum. Here it is, bubble gum. Bubble gum extract. If you were going to make a birthday cake, you would buy vanilla extract and put it in, and that's going to be a vanilla uh, birthday cake. Uh, we do the same thing with certain flavors. There's not every flavor you can do in uh, fresh fruit because there are no bubble gum trees in Florida or anywhere else that I've seen. But children still like bubble gum. So you can buy, just like we buy vanilla extract, which is made from vanilla beans, we're buying bubble gum flavor, which is, quite frankly, a chemical. Uh, so you have to say to your business, well, we're all natural and we're not going to do it and we're also going to tell children to go away. Or you can say, I realize that 90% of my business is, is all natural, but at the same time, I exceed to the demand that children want bubble gum and cotton candy ice cream, uh, Italian ice. So you can buy an extract for any flavor, uh, which is terrific. And bubble gum is just an exception. There just is no other way to do it but through chemicals. However, there is a company called uh, Green Mountain Flavors uh, that I highly recommend. Green Mountain Flavors is not in Vermont. Uh, it's not up in Bernie territory. It's uh, in Oswego, Illinois. But all you have to do is remember Green Mountain Flavors. And they are making, uh, this is a natural banana flavor. And you open it up and it, it smells just like, you know, fresh bananas, uh, which a lot of extracts don't, they smell like chemicals. Uh, this is made so that you can take a, a bland flavor like bananas and intensify it by adding a little bit of uh, banana extract. Um, in ice cream, ice cream is easier to flavor than ices because you're getting so much flavor from the dairy product. But when you get to sugar and water, you need more flavor, you need more intense flavor, it's, it's harder to do. So this Green Mountain Flavors uh, works very well. And, and a funny story about it, um, the owner, uh, uh, his, name, his last name is Sitton, uh, he sent me a bottle of beet juice, bright red beet juice. 
And I called him up. I said, Stan, come on. You really think I'm going to sell beet juice Italian ice in the South Bronx? It's not going to fly. And he started laughing. He said, no, Steve, beets are the reddest thing in nature. And you're making a cherry ice using fresh cherries, but you want a redder color to attract the children. The children love to see it really red. Um, my strawberry is a pale pink. I could have made it bright red by using some beet juice. And it's been something done to it, magic, so it doesn't smell or taste like beets. But that's the kind of business that they're doing, is making all nat natural extracts and flavorings. Certain flavors drive executive chefs crazy, like uh, cantaloupe, watermelon, uh, honeydew melon. They taste great when you're eating them, but if you take a, a piece of watermelon and squeeze it, all you got is water and some seeds. Uh, there's just nothing to it. So oftentimes you want to uh, bolster that fresh watermelon, maybe with an all-natural uh, extract like this. So you can make uh, Italian ices, sorbets, sorbettos, cream ices from fresh frozen product. You can use uh, natural extracts. And there is also a company called iRice Company, who uh, I have containers over there, that is making a uh, blend of um, ingredients, um, and not, it's not natural, but uh, they have a fantastic mango. I have trouble making mango fresh. And so where and when you're going to sell this product uh, depends on your market. If you're selling to a ballpark and uh, the ballpark has dictated the price and how much of their money, uh, your money they're going to take, you might be selling to a market where you're going to sell uh, a lesser quality. When you, walk, when you go to a gas station to buy gas and you walk into the convenience section, you're not expecting to great, get a Hebrew national hot dog uh, with great papal and mustard. It isn't going to happen. You're going to get something that's been on the Connolly Roller Grill for about five <laughs> days and is just completely worn out, but you're the one who chose to buy it. So there is, you know, there is a food for everybody and a market for everyone. So you just have to pick your market but also be willing to you know, say, well, I have to make a concession here when it comes to bubble gum or something I'll like that. I'll never sell bubble gum. No, and you don't have the clientele who's going to buy it. Correct, correct. So, again, it comes down yes, to the sir. clientele. Do you only sell out of your store? Do you, do you, uh, only do you sell out of my store. Uh, no, 4,000 square feet, uh, capacity 110. It's where we hold our classes, and that's where I sell everything. Uh, yeah, we do parties. Good, thank you. We do off-premise parties uh, in churches, uh, rec, rec centers, uh, clubhouses, people's homes. We do that. Jeff's business is a nightclub that sells ice cream. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's where people love to come. He does his magic. You haven't done any magic uh, today. Uh, day's not over. Day's not over. Okay. Uh, there's karaoke. I thought I made some magic. You did make magic. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's quite the unique business. Uh, if you go there at 2 in the afternoon, nobody's there. It's closed. You have to get there. I'm there making ice cream. Yeah, but you're, the door's you're, locked. Door's locked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's quite the unique business. Yes? Can you give us the order of how to make the ice cream? We store it and get ready to serve it. You make it the night before. If you're, what's the, like, the temperature of your freezers and when you transfer from one freezer to the next? Are you just selling it tomorrow? Yes, if you're doing it. Okay, what about the day after? Are you selling the same ice cream? Yes, if that's the case, too. Like okay. If you're on a big fair or something, you want to. It's just a Saturday, Sunday thing. Okay, uh, Saturday or Sunday thing, and it's ice cream, not ices. Ices. Uh, ices. I would uh, make it in the batch freezer and then freeze it down as cold as I can get it. If I have a, only a chest freezer, uh, I'll take it down to whatever that chest freezer goes down to, which might be minus 5, minus 10. I don't think you'll get much more than minus 10. I'm scooping it uh, without any chemicals in it. I'm scooping it at plus 16 degrees. So I've got minus 10 in the chest, and I've got plus 16 where I'm scooping it. And it could be anywhere from 12 to 16. Um, I'm freezing it rock hard because you're going, you said you're going to a fair, and I want it to be able to hold up. So I'm going to take it at that super cold temperature, and I'm going to then transport it to my fare, knowing that it's warming up. And I'll show you something. We used to do it with dry ice, or, and you can do it with a refrigerated cabinet, but this is something that works nicely. Um, this is made by a company called Carlisle, an American company. 
and you can buy these from what's it called the web restaurant store web restaurant. web restaurant store i think they're about 80 bucks and what that is is a giant blue ice you know i have the blue ice block that you put in with the child's uh, lunch pail you know with the sandwich if anybody ever does that still uh, this is filled with uh, a liquid not water uh, that will freeze very cold like a, a glycol uh, or an antifreeze it's going to freeze super cold colder in, in the old days it used to be salt water because salt water goes colder than fresh water. So you freeze this up the night before, and then you've got your 10 below tub, and, or five below, and you put it right in there, and now you're good for hours. Now, a customer just wrote me the other day, and he said, I didn't get hours out of it. I had it sitting uh, in the sun, wow. and it was 85 degrees, and I don't know why everything melted. And I thought, <laughs> My fault, because I didn't say that. I forgot the one step, and that was, well, I won't bring it over. It should have been in an igloo cooler so that you're going to maintain as much of the cold as you want. Or in one of those, those things. Or in a, a dipping cabinet. They make dipping, uh, Nelson Manufacturing makes a beautiful dipping cabinet that is double walled. These are just single wall, and they have refrigeration going around them. They make it double wall. They fill it with salt water, and you plug it in the night before. It's just like a giant version of this but it's a whole cabinet. And so the walls all freeze solid. You put it in your truck, you drive it to the location, and uh, if you can, you plug it in, and it keeps the walls cold uh, through the salt water. Uh, if not, you just unplug it, and you've got a certain number of hours, a lot of hours, that it's gonna keep cold. But this is an inexpensive way to do it, and it is successful unless you leave it out in the blazing sun. Um, Jeff mentioned that he leaves ice cream out to warm up. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but the way I would bring up ices and ice cream, I would have two Sears chest freezers if I was uh, doing, say, a retail store. I'd have one at 10 below, and I'd have another one uh, for, ice cream, for ices, probably at 10 above. Because I've got my dipping cabinet that you saw before, and you've got a tub down below, and you've got a tub up here that you're scooping from. So we have two tubs of lemon ice. But we're going to go through five tubs today. So we're scooping from this one. Then when this one gets empty, we bring this one up, and we scoop from this. We take a tub that is at 10 degrees in a Sears chest freezer and put it down here. It's 10 degrees, and it's warming up to 16. So we're always rotating in, bringing the temperatures up. If I just leave this tub out on the counter with Italian ice, it's all going to melt around the outside. You ever wonder why husbands are so pleased to help serve the ice cream, it's because we left it out on the counter and it's all melting around the edges. And we're taking the spoon and you know you do it. <laughs> this is Connie's husband, our, uh, our uh, senior accountant. And um, so we're all scooping it like this and eating it and then we're you know, serving the rest to everybody. Uh, you want to temper ice cream or ices up and the way you do it is you take this and put it in a warmer cabinet. So if you have haagen tonight, and it's rock solid and you're going to have it after dinner, put it in your refrigerator and let the refrigerator warm it up to a scoopable temperature. It won't melt around the outside. Your husband won't be willing to uh, go scoop it because there's no you know, benefit. Uh, but you'll have a better product for your customers. What about gelato? Gelato is usually served soft, and it's uh, usually about um, 10 to 12 degrees. Now. I wrote an article years ago, and this is where Jeff and I don't disagree, but his business is so unique to the industry. He's selling today what he made today, um, and he does extremely well doing that because of his location and his business. He's right near this retirement community, and everybody comes over. Um, it doesn't work in every other location. When gelaterias came out, I, I thought they were doomed to fail, and they were. And the reason, uh, I'll try to make it short, uh, over in Italy, they eat ice cream two, three times a day. We eat it maybe every third day, uh, otherwise our cardiologists would kill us. Uh, we don't eat as much ice cream as they do in Europe. Then again, we eat a bag of uh, uh, chips and a Diet Coke uh, twice a day. That's our American staple diet. Um, so they're eating ice cream every day. And there are gelaterias everywhere. So here's a gelateria. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. I want a terrasuma gelato. I'm sorry, we just ran out. 
no big deal. I'm going down the street half a block. I'll get my tiramisu there. I have no brand loyalty. They're all quote, good, they think. Uh, here in the United States, I haven't been to Jeff's place in, say, four years, and I can't wait to try his mint chip. He's got to have it in stock. If, if, if he's out of mint chip, I'm going to be really disappointed because uh, let's say it's one of his staple flavors. So when gelateria is opened, they had 15 flavors of gelato, way too many flavors, 20 flavors of gelato. It looked beautiful. And they're standing around waiting for people to come and buy it. And there aren't tons of people coming to buy it. They're buying it when they feel like having ice cream. Uh, so after three days of this stuff sitting in the cabinet <laughs> without having to go through a hardening phase, they had to throw it out. Just boom, gone. And that would be like me ordering up, you know, I get a tractor trailer a week of steel come in here. And that would be like me saying, oh, well, I only went through a third of that steel and it's going to go bad by Friday. So I had to throw it away. I'd be out of business in no time. So I wrote an article. And I said, what is wrong with freezing gelato? Why can't you do, treat it like ice cream and freeze it? And everybody said, oh, it's heresy. You're going to burn in hell and, you know, the yada, yada, yada. And I still did anyway. So here's some gelatos that we made about six weeks ago. And I froze it solid. And so it's perfectly good because it's down at a very cold temperature. So now I'm not throwing this inventory away after three days. I keep it in my freezer. Well, you can't decorate it really pretty. Well, I could add some decoration afterwards, but for the most part, I think that looks pretty nice, and, and it keeps me in business. So um, how long you're going to keep the product is going to answer uh, what temperatures you keep it at. Once you bring this up to serving temperature, the shelf life starts falling apart. If you're in Baskin Robbins, it's been there for 10 days. If you're in Jeff's store, it hasn't been there four hours because it's selling out so fast. So it's all about speed. And if you're not moving a product, if you're absolutely, let's say this is bubblegum licorice and you're absolutely in love with bubblegum licorice. If it's been hanging around for six months and it's not selling, nobody but you likes bubblegum licorice. <laughs> Jeff's tried my, or he didn't try it, he was too disgusted with me. Uh, I made coffee banana ice cream. I think I still have 10 gallons of coffee banana ice cream because the only person who will eat it is me. Can we discuss you know? your avocado ice cream? That was Paul. That's not my fault. The, the, uh, the, the, the bananas and the coffee were fighting for world dominance in the ice cream, and nobody liked it. Paul asked me to make avocado, so five gallons of avocado ice cream. There's still 4.9 gallons of avocado left in the freezer, and that was a year and a half ago. It's Hi, Paula. <laughs> hey, we were just saying hi, hi about How do you? Hi, honey. <laughs> Okay, we're going to feed them. So uh, if, if people don't like avocado ice cream, then don't make avocado ice cream. Can I sleep at your house tonight? <laughs> Any other questions or do you want to eat? We got a great lunch for you. Let's eat. Help yourself. There's plenty of food. <laughs>